if we have um, more than one squared term, then we're going to have uh, one, of, one of three shapes, either a paraboloid, an ellipsoid, or a hyperboloid. The names seem a lot like the conic sections, parabola, ellipse, and hyperbola. And of course, there's a close relationship, and we'll discuss what that is as we go along. Now, the first of these shapes arises when you have two squared terms. So imagine that, one, that the coefficient of one of your squared terms, perhaps z, um, z squared, maybe that coefficient is 0. Then we can ignore that term. And of course, the x and the y, since there are squared terms there, we're assuming a and b are not 0, then they can be absorbed through completing the square. So we can kind of simplify this and say, well, yeah, that case really is just going to reduce to something like this, where we have ax squared plus by squared plus um, only a linear term in z. That one couldn't be absorbed by completing the square because there was no z squared term to complete the square on. So we have something that looks like this. For example, x squared plus y squared plus z equals 0. Now, um, the way we name these paraboloid, ellipsoid, or hyperboloid, um, it's by what the traces are. If the traces are mostly parabolas, then we'll call it a paraboloid. If they're mostly ellipses, then we'll call it an ellipsoid. And if the traces are mostly um, hyperbolas, then we'll call it a hyperboloid. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if we look at this equation, we have x squared plus y squared plus um, z equals 0. So let's just trace with x equals 0. If x equals 0, then this term is gone, and we just have z equals negative y squared. Now that, if x equals 0, you're in the yz plane. So if x equals 0, can you see that you're in this plane created by the y and z axes? And the shape z equals minus y squared is a parabola opening down. If you set, um, instead of setting x equal to 0, if you set y equal to 0, if this term is 0, then you pull the other one over and you get z equals minus x squared. So we got a parabola, and we got a parabola again. This time, the parabola is in the xz plane. So we have a parabola here in the yz plane, in this perpendicular plane now. We have another parabola. So the next trace we could consider is um, one of constant z. So if we set z equal to 0, then we're just going to have x squared plus y squared equals 0, which is a circle of radius 0. In other words, it's a single point, right? This is just um, there's only one point that would satisfy that would be if x and y were both 0. If either one of these were not 0, then you, would, you couldn't have this come out to be 0 because you can't add a positive number to a non-negative number and get 0. So we got a single point here. So that's this point here. But if we were to pick maybe another plane of constant z to trace in, like z equals negative 1, then our equation would be x squared plus y squared um, minus 1 equals 0, or x squared plus y squared equals 1. So down here in the plane z equals negative 1, we see a circle of radius 1. You can see um, the further down we make z, um, the bigger the radius of the circle is going to get. So we have a, a circle, which is a special case of an ellipse. So how do we come up with the name paraboloid? Well, in, when we slice in, const, in, in two planes, right, two directions, we see parabolas. And in one direction, we see ellipses. Since it's mostly parabolas, that's why we call it a paraboloid. There are two, two kinds of paraboloid, actually. An elliptic paraboloid, one that has elliptical cross-sections. There's also a hyperbolic paraboloid. So, so when you see one of these shapes, you just want to think about, if I slice in constant x, and I slice, slice in constant y, and I slice in constant z, what shapes do we see? We can see, no matter what constant we make x, we see parabolas, right? Whatever constant we make y, then in the other directions we see parabolas. If we make z some constant, then we're going to see ellipses. Therefore, this is a paraboloid. Oops, I call them elliptic parabola. Paraboloid. So parabola would just be the curve, but a paraboloid is a surface. That's the difference between the two names. Um, let's do an example of the other kind of paraboloid. In this case, we go to analyze this shape. Let's think what happens when we set x equal to 0. If we set x equal to 0, we get z equals y squared. That's a parabola. If we set, so the trace in the um, yz plane, 
So here's the y z plane here. Here's x, which is set to zero, is a parabola opening up. If we set y equal to zero, then we get um, z equals minus x squared, which is also a parabola. So two out of three are going to be parabolas, and therefore we know the name of this thing is a paraboloid. But if we look in that, if we look in the um, xz plane, so in the xz plane we're seeing parabolas this way. Now, if you were to choose a different value of y, basically since we have uh, we have z equals minus x squared um, plus y squared, if you set y maybe to be one, then you're just going to see another parabola opening down. It's just been lifted up a little bit. So. Basically, whatever the value is when x equals 0, whatever the value of y is, that's going to give you a parabola opening down. You see what we're getting here is a shape. You might kind of think of it as a saddle, right? Sitting in a saddle. The saddle's curved this way, but then it's also curved down so that your legs can go in the saddle. So, so we have sort of a, a saddle shape, or um, maybe if you've ever had a Prinkle potato chip, right? Prinkle potato chip is kind of like a circular cut. So if you were to take this and uh, and uh, cut it with some cylinder, then you would see right the cylinder that the Pringles fit in. Then you would see a um, see a Pringle, right? So um, let's see. We haven't cut in the direction z equals zero, um, but when we do, so in plane of constant z, when we do, we get x squared equals y squared which is um, x equals plus or minus y. That's actually sort of an x, right? So when z equals 0, we have kind of an x going this way and an x going that way across the front. If we choose z to be some other value, like if z equals 1, then um, we have um, x squared minus y squared plus 1 equals 0. So if we turn this around, we have y squared minus x squared equals 1. I just moved the two variables over to the other side. And that we recognize as a hyperbola. So um, if z equals 1, we have a hyperbola opening back this way. And the other branch is on the forward side. And so going around the saddle that way. So this x, in fact, is just um, that's just the equation for the asymptotes of these hyperbolas. Now if we set z equal to negative 1, then we have x squared minus y squared minus 1 equals 0. That's another hyperbola, um, but this time the hyperbolas are opening out in, in this direction. So there's one in the forward and one in the back that way. So um, basically no matter what constant we slice with for z, we're seeing either hyper hyperbola or sort of the special case, the asymptotes of that hyperbola. So this shape is mostly parabolas, therefore we call it a paraboloid, and it's got hyperbolas in the other direction. So we call this guy a hyperbolic paraboloid as opposed to an elliptic paraboloid. So you can always recognize a hyperbolic paraboloid. You're going to have two terms that are squared, but when they're on the same side, they're, they have opposite signs. That's going to make it hyperbolic. If they have the same sign, so if it was x squared plus y squared, so that the two squared terms have the same, side when they're on the same sign when they're on the same side, then that's going to make cross sections which are elliptic, right? Otherwise, um, two, two sets of parabolas Parabolas in two directions and ellipses in one direction makes it an elliptic paraboloid. So you kind of see how the names go.